Uh, good morning. I'm uh, welcome, Wilson Jr. As Bill said, uh, GSL uh, Welcome Group. Uh, we develop uh, single tenant uh, commercial facilities, primarily industrial, manufacturing, office, and laboratory. Uh, Mark Twain may have been right uh, back in his day, but today's bankers are actually doing everything they can to make loans in spite of the bank examiners telling them not to. So the good news is this year is we're seeing a lot more movement uh, and activity from the banks, which is going to fuel uh, our whole industry. At this time a year ago, uncertainty existed in virtually every front. Uh, the banks were largely on the sidelines, still wrestling with TARP and the repayment of government loans. Uh, most banks were overweighted in real estate loans. And other than the SBA loans, few, were willing, few if any, were willing to make uh, any loans that could be tagged by their bank examiners. Uh, we had the Bush tax cuts looming 13 months in advance. And with all this uncertainty, uh, countless industrial expansion projects were put on hold. We had a lot of activity that we were looking at uh, last year, and pretty much most of that was put on hold because of the uncertainty. The year 2010 ends with some cautious optimism. Finally, expiration, expectation is that the Bush era tax cuts will be renewed and extended, uh, and that should uh, uh, really loosen up uh, the uncertainty. And we anticipate that we'll see a lot of forward movement in a lot of these projects that were put on hold last year and delayed. Banks and insurance companies are making some new long loans. Uh, we're seeing some longer-term financing available now that we didn't see uh, before. To get a better perspective of where we stood last year, uh, I want to look at some of the major, major driving factors and key yardsticks in the Houston industrial market. Uh, our industrial market uh, totals almost 500 million square feet. Uh, that's up uh, uh, a small bit from last year. Uh, CoStar reports that only 219,000 square feet of space is under construction uh, during some point in, two, in 2010. And that compares to 3.2 million that was under construction uh, last year and 8 million that was under construction two years ago. So the good news is there's very little new space under construction right now, uh, and so we don't, we're not, I don't really anticipate any large overhang. The largest project currently under construction is the Port Wall Distribution Center 4, which is 150,000 square foot building spec. Uh, to date, it has zero pre-leasing, and it was able to move forward uh, in anticipation of, uh, of uh, this shortage coming forward. Uh, it's located in the northeast industrial section. The total industrial market vacancy uh, in Houston uh, decreased from last year from 6 uh, to 6.3% from 6.8% at this time last year. Uh, the Houston vacancy rate of 6.3% is substantially uh, better than the national uh, average vacancy rate in excess of 10%. So Houston industrial is in a lot better shape than uh, most of the rest of the country. Uh, warehouse projects uh, represent about 91% of the industrial market, uh, had a 5.8% vacancy. So in the warehouse sector, the majority of the market, there's, a, there's even a lower uh, vacancy rate. And flex projects, which represent about 9% of our overall market, had an 11.5% uh, vacancy. Uh, single tenant buildings, which is our business at GSL, account for 52% of the uh, Houston industrial market and the rest is multi-tenant projects. In 2010, 73% uh, of the newly developed projects were single tenant. So we have, we've seen in 2010 and going forward the single tenant business, uh, I guess, getting more than their fair share of the, of the new activity just because of the nature of the, uh, of the businesses. Uh, average rental rates, as you can expect, are down uh, to $5.20 a foot uh, from $5.92 a year ago. Uh, reflecting the soft economic conditions uh, and, have, and have, have produced a lower construction and financing costs. So uh, even though the rates are down, so are financing costs and construction costs. So the spreads are still uh, holding fairly, uh, fairly good. Uh, with limited inventory and positive absorption, tenants are facing fewer and fewer alternatives. Uh, if absorption continues to increase, rental rates uh, should, expect, uh, should experience a modest increase uh, in the coming year, just because there's not, really, there's not a lot of new product uh, on the ground yet. 
Uh, the greatest absorption in the city was the Northwest Corridor, uh, which represents about 27% of the overall city. Uh, two million, a little over two million feet of, of, of space was absorbed in the last 12 months uh, in the Northwest Corridor. Uh, there's a project at, on Hollister, a new 180,000 foot building that's 100% occupied, and a company, local company called Point Smith uh, built and occupies uh, their own building of another 180,000 square feet. So all the single tenant buildings are pretty much occupied, uh, you know, by the nature of the business. So we're really only dealing with the uh, risk in the uh, in the multi-tenant uh, spec. Uh, the Southwest Corridor absorbed almost two million feet as well. Uh, you had the Rooms to Go warehouse. Uh, out on I-10, which represented about a million two of that two million feet. So that was a big chunk of that absorption. Uh, Ashley Furniture moved into 300,000 feet uh, new to the city. Uh, and uh, Furniture Brands leased another 100,000 feet on Airtex. Uh, and that north corridor uh, absorbed about 900,000 square feet. And really only the northeast corner, corridor, uh, with a loss of 450,000 feet, and the southern corridor, uh, which had a loss of 110,000 feet, were really the only sectors of the Houston industrial market that, uh, that had negative absorption over the last 12 months. Uh, good, last year, uh, we had uh, 782, uh, sorry, 894,000 square feet uh, on the sublease market in industrial. Uh, the good news is this year that's down to 782,000 feet. And, and that only represents 2.5% of, uh, of the total industrial market. Uh, back in the, uh, in the 90s and the 80s, you know, we suffered a lot from a big chunk of, uh, in all sectors, of sublease space coming on the market. Uh, the good news is in industrial, that's, that's going down, and it represents a small percentage of our overall market. Uh, with increase in capital availability in 2010, uh, there's been a marked uh, slow uh, recovery in investment sales in the industrial market. So we're starting to see where it pretty much screeched to a halt uh, at the end of 08 and, and 09. Uh, we're starting to see a lot of movement in that with the banks uh, and, and the uh, insurance companies jumping back in. Uh, in the first uh, six months of 2010, there were 13 industrial transactions for a total of $75 million. Uh, compared to 15 in 09 for a total value of only $26 million. So our, our volume has tripled uh, and is, and is uh, from what we're seeing out there, is uh, increasing. Average price uh, was $40 a foot uh, on sales in 2010 compared to 42, a little over $42 a foot in uh, 2009. And cap rates uh, have averaged about... Uh, a little under 8% uh, for the first six months of 2010. And one of the largest transactions in sales was the Igloo facility, uh, in, it would, which closed in May uh, back on the west side of town, uh, about a million square feet uh, in Katy that traded at uh, about, uh, about an 8.15% cap rate, or $42 a foot. Uh, the Emerging Trends in Real Estate Survey, 2011 survey, uh, puts the national... Uh, 20, uh, August cap rate at 7.75% uh, on sales. Industrial warehouse properties uh, and, and forecast that, rain, that, that to remain constant through uh, December of next year. So cap rates are not, uh, are, should hold uh, at their current levels uh, over the next year, maybe trade down just a little bit, but I don't see um, uh, uh, cap rates drifting back up because of the shortage. Uh, as a result of Houston's de facto be, being the de facto energy capital of the world and our strategic position with the Port of Houston, uh, we are really considered nationally as an attractive uh, industrial real estate market. If you look at uh, really all of Texas, but particularly Houston uh, in the industrial sector is, is, is being really looked at at a national level, which is good for Houston. At this time last year, there was a, a, we were facing a lack of debt financing. Over the past year, there's been a marked increase in availability of bank debt uh, and insurance company financing. Uh, only a handful of new conduit financing have, have closed, uh, which is not really a material source of financing over the past couple of years in any event. Uh, there's still, we still have the pending uh, large overhang of maturities of conduit loans that we have to work through the market, but our experience so far is that all the lenders are, are working with those and reworking them, uh, so I don't really anticipate a lot of those hitting the market on a, on a fire sale kind of basis. 
the believe it or not, the uh, CMBS market is back and growing again. Uh, the uh, emerging trends forecast 75 billion in CB CMBS markets in the next uh, few years, which is still far shorter than the 250 billion that was done at the peak of 2007. But that market is starting to grow, uh, grow some more. Uh, financing is being uh, consummated at lower uh, loan to values than it has in the past. Uh, equity is now the important component of, uh, of industrial financing. The uh, equity is king. It was location, then it was financing, and now it's equity. Uh, the equity has been waiting on the sidelines uh, for the last uh, couple of years, uh, waiting for the fire sales uh, that might come. Uh, and since those bargain sales never materialized, we're starting to see equity come back in the market. I think the train, they see the train leaving the station, and now all this money's been raised, and they're going to start jumping in to, uh, uh, to make sure that they uh, get uh, what's coming up.